Okay, so let's continue talking about the overworked culture and underregulation of China's TV industry. So when we talk about China's in TV industry, there are roughly two types of things. One is type of entertainment program or other type of program like news, like documentary that's actually produced by TV stations. So if you are employed by say Zhejiang TV, Hunan TV, you are an editor, you are a cameraman, whatever, by the station, you kind of are more like a regular um, 9 to 5 with quotation mark workers that you get salary paid monthly. You have what we call 五险一金, so the sort of general insurance package that's included in your employment contract. When I say 9 to 5 with quotation mark, it is because most people in TV industry don't work 9 to 5. They might work from 6 to 12. I mean, it's very common, especially during holiday seasons when everybody else in the world is like happy and then having holidays. It is the worst time of TV stations, Chinese New Year. and type of celebration, you can see big shows, big variety shows. Everybody who's involved in creating this program have no time off. So that's one type of TV industry. The other type is drama making because drama making are usually these days actually not done by TV stations anymore. It's usually done by production companies collaborating sometimes with TV station, but nowadays more likely with streaming platforms such as ITE, Tengxun, Youku, Mongo TV. And this is the part that I know best because I've worked on this type of things. So if you are employed by TV station, it's a different type of TV work. If you're doing drama, it's another type of work. But whether you're on this side or that side, the fact is overwork, underregulation, very common. The underregulation part probably is more pronounced in the drama making, and I'm gonna explain why. Because if you're employed by a TV station, you are, you are more like a traditional employed person by an employer. If you work on crews, to film stuff, dramas, film, whatever, that is a totally different game and it's terrible. I used to work on TV film crew. I quit very quickly. I think I worked on worked on it. I, I would say add together probably two years. The reason being, I think if I continued, I would not be alive today. And <laughs> that's being very honest. After the sort of quite intense period of working on a production crew, Two, three months later, I started to have like stomach problems and then cross the new year, early the next year, I started to develop really bad ulcer. And that's one of my worst experiences <laughs> of my body in my life. Then immediately after that, I got hyperthyroidism and I took medicine for over seven years long and I got like blood drawn to test every two months or something for seven years. So it's not very happy experience, let's just say. And that just all happened after I left. But the fact is that if I didn't leave, when I had all those things happening, the, the symptoms and flared up, I would actually be on the crew still filming because that thing continued for another year or so. Like, I can't imagine. If I had that on the set, what would happen? Would it be like, I don't know. I, I may just die there. I don't know. Like, you can't, you know, it's another possibility. But I'm just telling you, how tough it is to work in an industry. So I'm talking about the second type, the drama making. In China, there's no gonghui for actors for uh, behind the scenes of workers in this industry, gonghui union. There's committee, right? This committee is called, let's just say, because I actually have it <laughs> on my iPad again, because I want to give it the correct name. So that's for actors. China Television Artist Committee or Actor Committee. That's just for the actors, right? But this committee is not a union. It doesn't have any legal power to say we want to hold a strike, we want to negotiate pay, we want to negotiate work hours, so I want, we want all the actors to stop and we have the um, ability to do that un until you, you know, like grant our rights or whatever, like, yeah. It doesn't do that. It doesn't have that power. And that's just for actors who are in front of the camera who tend to get most public attention. And if shit happens to them, you know, people know. But if you are a behind scene worker, if you are a gaffer, if you are a continuity, if you are a makeup person, costume person, I mean, there are hundreds and hundreds of people working on a drama set. I think for uh, The Untamed, it was like over 800 people. Imagine that. None of these people have any form of organization that has actually real power to represent them. And this is very common in China. So usually when you do a drama, most of the people working on this production 
are like contract workers. If the drama is pr produced by a company, say a media company, it could include a couple of people from this company who are parts of the project. They are employed by that company as an employee, so they would have their sort of relationship tied to that. They might have their insurance package with that. They get their salaries, maybe they get their bonuses. That's only a few of the people actually on the crew. Most of the people that work on the crew, such as the camera team, the lighting team, the makeup team, the hair team, the costume team, the whatever team, are all hired on. Usually because the producer has been in the industry for a long time and he knows, she knows, who knows, whatever. They have long time partnership with um, different branches of professions. And often, for example, the camera team is led by the uh, director of photography and he usually works in the industry for a long time so he has his own team like he has his focus puller he has his whatever person and they have a team that's rather re relatively stable so the producer hires that camera team to work on this pr production so within the camera team however they distribute that money who gets what is up to them. So it could be very complicated, but often when you work in those type of behind the scene roles, you are paid as contract workers, which means you do not have constant sort of relation with um, your employer, which means you get money paid to you, but you don't have any other benefits. There's no bottom line and there's no security. And if a job is good, you get a little bit more paid. If the job is not good, you know, like accidents happen in the prolonged shooting schedule, um, things run over budget, uh, all type of things, then you're left to fend yourself. There's no official body to represent any of those people who work behind the scenes of TV drama production. There's no work hour limit. I was on a drama and because they had problems with their money, I was supposed to get the money every month. I didn't get it for five months and that was actually crossing the new year of Chinese New Year. I was lucky because I was a single person and I wasn't really in any money problems. So I can do that. But there are people who are on the crew whose income solely depends on their work. They have a family behind them, mortgages to pay. They have um, children to take care of and they didn't get paid for five months. I don't know how they survived that. That happens. And when it happens, there's literally no way for these people to to go anywhere to, to sue the production. I mean, not realistic because you've been in the industry for years and you probably will continue. And this is the only thing you do. Like most of the people I know who had this problem, like who has have children and mortgage, they're in their 40s. Their prop department, whatever department, they literally cannot change their career now. They have no power to actually argue with the production if they m mess up their relationship right within the industry then then they're not gonna get their second job they cannot afford to anger the big players the players who hire you the people who actually have money behind so the only thing you can do is take it and hope the next month the money comes unless you really just want to say i quit the industry f all you people who don't pay me i'm gonna sue you to the court i don't want to work in the future in this industry anymore you can go and do that probably but still it's gonna take years and probably still not gonna get your money back and you have to pay all your legal fees to do that so nobody does that for a whole team everybody was just like we hope next month we get paid while you still work overtime every day so the normal schedule of working on a tv production is 24 7 because there's no union there's no law right and then because production is like every day you spend on production, you spend hundreds and thousands of dollars. You have to feed the whole crew. You have to l pay for residence, for lodge, for transportation, renting equipment. One extra day equals thousands and tens of thousands of dollars going out. And because there is no union, no law to make it reasonable for the people who work there. Therefore, from money's perspective, from investment perspective, I want this to be finished as quickly as possible. Better nobody sleeps. If we shoot it in 30 days, it's better than we shoot it in 40 days. So in China, if you want to work in drama production, whether you're an actor or a behind the scene worker, you better be prepared because you're not supposed to sleep. It's very common to go out early in the morning, like four or five o'clock and work till midnight. 
even later, a full 24 hour run, and you have like what, three hours to sleep, and you expect after three hours to start working again, because every day the call sheet is there, you have to shoot that much. If you run too late the previous day, and then you delay the next day, and then the schedule gets pushed off, extra money gets spent, you blow your budget. I mean, pre-production, probably you have more leeway of that, you do get off. Uh, at a more human hour, but still when I was working because I worked mostly on pre-production of the drama It's still very common for me to get there say early morning 7, 8, 9 and then leave 10, 11, sometimes 12 During pre-production you may get one day off on the weekend Once it started production, there is no day off uh, You work 7 days, you even work through national holidays If the crew give you two days off, three days off for Chinese New Year, you should kneel and thank them for their kindness. And during each day, there's really no limit of how many hours can work. I mean, if you can cram 48 hours in a day, they will be very happy. Often the actors complain about how difficult it is and then people see that because they are the forefront people and they have fans and then, you know, it's known to be very grueling working on Chinese TV or film production, but if you're a behind the scenes worker, if you're just a gaffer, if you are just a makeup person, if you are like on the director's team, like assistant or stuff, you work more than them. Because once the actor finishes shooting, they go and they go to sleep and do whatever, the direct, especially the directing team, the core people will go back to their hotel room and sit down and have a meeting about what we shoot tomorrow, what we need to change today. So if say, you actor have worked on the day for 20 hours and they get four hours sleep then the directing team probably would work 22 23 hours and get one hour sleep and i can give you a couple of like details about working on drama crews and what type of things you're supposed to do when you are on set filming often you end up standing for like 16 hours 18 hours a day Unless you get a small stool, you bring yourself, like, you know, you need that in Chinese production, just saying, everybody needs that because your leg will break. One thing you first have to learn is to be standing on your two feet for incredibly long hours. Second, have you ever seen people doing laundry from like daybreak to midnight, nonstop? I've seen it. And once it's done, it needs to be dried, it needs to be ironed. The whole room is like hundreds of costumes covered. And this person is just ironing with the steam on. There's nothing they else they do, they just iron. And they're steamed completely, like pale. Because costume dramas, if you're making that, it's like insane. And when they carry the costumes, they carry, they have like huge bags. Like girls who work on costume team need to have like super strong biceps or otherwise you will not be able to just even carry the stuff that you need to carry. Hair department for contemporary dramas is like breeze. Costume dramas, oh my god. Especially when it has a lot of characters and they are all relatively important characters. So need, they need to have their wig fit to their head. If you're just an extra, you would just grab a random one and you don't need to look very good and because you're like in the background. But if you need to have a close up, the hair needs to fit you very well. And it's all done by hand. They would each hold, I've seen a room, like seven, eight of people sitting in a room holding this wooden head with a net over it and, and with a hook and just hooking, hooking hair onto that. You need like tens of thousands of strands for one head. These people just were there doing that from daybreak to late night and they work seven days a week and they don't stop. If you work in industry, you are expected to work like that. Um, I've known directors towards the end of the shooting, when they need to hit that deadline, they rent everything till that day. If you, like you can't even pass one hour, go over one hour. You have to finish shooting at that moment. They have too many things left. The director didn't sleep for a week. He was like, every day I slept about one hour or two for an entire week to the point they need to have IV while they're directing or they, they have like those Chinese medicines made, ready-made Chinese medicines and drink it like, I don't know, drink it like water to make them just like awake enough to finish shooting. This is very common. This is like expected from you. This is how it works. I can continue these stories like for hours about what I've known and per my personal experiences. And that culture is so toxic and the unregulatedness is so wrong. It's very hard to imagine that in 2019, you know, in this modern contemporary world, 
this is still allowed. This is pure exploitation. And it's in the sort of what we consider to be rich and famous and glam and glitter industry. I think last year or the year before, like when they did the um, film uh, Chinatown, Detective Chinatown 2, parts of it was shot in New York. The Chinese team was so shocked and uncomfortable and felt troubled by the fact that the US team work eight hours a day. They take breaks. There's compulsory day, like time off. There's weekend. And like, you know, like you can only shoot that much a day and then you need to go home and live. The Chinese team was like, this is too slow. We have that much and we need to shoot. If this stretches out that much, my budget, blah, blah, blah. But the US team was like, yeah. Well, you're in the US now, you need to follow our rules. This is how it's done here. It's just like any other job. It's just like any other office job that you work on TV, that you work on this. It's the same thing. People need to rest, especially like creative people. Like, can you imagine like not having any rest and how can you even create good stuff? Not to mention when you are tired, you run into equipment, things don't get checked up properly, fire starts. I mean, two people actually, crew member died on the filming of The Untamed in the fire. It was first covered, but then leaked. And you hardly see any report on that because yeah, people mostly focus on the stars and their happiness and tragedy, whatever. But if you feel the actors are the poor creatures, right? The crews have it worse times. I don't know. How, how Can you even quantify that? So this thing that happened to Godfrey Gao sparked a discussion again online about the insane work culture within this industry. There's just no bottom line, there's no limit, there's no no rule supply. I really love drama, film, storytelling. I think if you watch my channel for a long time you probably know that already. But that's not enough of reason to sustain me working in this industry and to give up my health, my sanity. So I quit that a long time ago and I'm not regretting it because otherwise I probably would have like so many injuries on me, so many health problems on me. I would be living on pills now. That would be like if I didn't die somewhere along the line over the last 10 years. The industry needs to change. The rules needs to change. There needs to be compulsory things that everybody has to stick to. Yeah, it will make everything more expensive. It will make production time frame longer. It will make the capital and investment people angrier, but it needs to be done. I don't think humans should live for work. We should live for life. So this is the under-regulated and super overworked culture in, in Chinese TV or film industry. Film probably gets better because usually you have longer, much longer proportionally to the final stuff that comes out of the camera um, <clears throat> production period. And it's more likely to get better rest if you're shooting on a film crew, but a TV crew. In China, the standard speed of producing per episode is about two to three days. And from two days to three days, it's considered normal. If you need to rush, you can literally film one or like one episode per one and a half day or something. Like less than two days, one episode. Just imagine a workload. This video is all over the place and I don't have a script, I don't have teleprompter in front of me, I'm not reading off anything, I'm just going totally like off script and just talking about what I remember about working there and the big problems I have with it. <laughs> it's like sometimes when you consume drama, right, you remember the cruelty of this industry. It's like wearing child labor clothing or wearing blood diamond. It's like, do you enjoy that? You know, do you know like your enjoyment is actually created by hours and hours of men hour? that's being totally exploited by capital in the way that's not that different from the industrial age of the West when people first all crowded to London and being totally exploited by big manufacturers and factories and whatever. Um, not that different, still pretty much the same situation. It just looks more glamour and pretty. So that's the end of this video. I, uh, I think I've said everything I could possibly remember or say or is this similar to wherever you are? I mean, if you're in the UK or US, I know it's not like that because I've worked on UK film crews very briefly. Like, it's so funny. Like, I was like, wow, this is how you guys do things because there was a child actor and they literally have a timer. When this kid show up on set, the moment he walks off the car, click. And it, <laughs> it was like, okay, he's been here for over 
eight hours, like literally it runs to eight, eight, eight hours and then we're like, click, okay, he has to go. Not one second more, like if, if, he, if even if you're shooting and he's speaking in the middle of a line and he's like, time's up, do it tomorrow, goodbye. I was like, oh my god, this is how it's done? Wow. And then when you go to China, it was like a different planet compared to how Chinese TV people work, which is there's never a time off, never time off. So dear Chinese drama viewers, next time you watch a Chinese drama, know that, especially a period drama, know that. From every drop of sweat that you see on the actor's faces, there are a thousand more on the crew members and they're never seen and they are so underpaid, overworked, not supported by any systems and it really needs to be changed. Thank you for watching Alf New X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and live healthy and take care of yourself. Happy drama watching. I feel that's so ironic when I say it.